Hey, welcome again to whatever we got in the shoot. What is it today, Kalen? <laughs> hey, it's uh, us and ropes. <laughs> ropes? Yeah, I hate ropes. Well, I like ropes. Uh, well, let's just start with you. I What's never. The context? Well, any context, frankly, because I never grew up in the rodeo world. Um, right. And a lot of rodeoers, a lot of the rodeo community know how to handle a rope, a lariat. Um, not a lasso, for God's sakes. It's oh, a Jesus. Uh, yeah. the, and, and frankly, those guys are handy about it. They're, they, you ask them to go rope something and you need it roped, they probably get it. Um, you don't have to ask. They're always looking to rope something. It's also true. Uh, right? <laughs> now, now, we use ropes uh, when we're on a horse and we're getting them used to it and, and uh, familiarized with it, um, kind of like uh, another episode we, we talked about and uh, just getting the horse essentially broadening them. But uh, you and I, frankly, and I don't know how Braden is, I would get, well, he's a god at everything he picks up. So he's probably got it. He just it. pisses me off. Yeah. He's one of, those, one of those guys that, oh, you want me to do that? Never seen it before. How's that? Oh, yeah. And then he excels at it. It's like, yeah. I'm not a blacksmith, a but I'll, 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 I'll dilly dally in it. Oh, I'm a master blacksmith the next day. <laughs> uh, just, I hate those people. And he's my boy. What's great. Horrible. What's great is I love to watch him have a meltdown though, when he can't do something like that. When he that becomes easily. human. Oh my God. He loses <laughs> it. It's funny. It's, it's like, good, good. I'm glad to see you struggle with something. You know, <laughs> anyway, sorry. You know, uh, I know but you and I, we suck at him. But oh, I, I suck horribly. I've rubbed, I've definitely roped my horse a time or two, and I'm so glad nobody ever caught that on camera. Um, we've now, <laughs> keep, we rope our horses on purpose around the legs. Yeah. I roped mine as around a training the training aid. It's a training. Yeah. I roped mine around the neck twice on accident, just doing this. And I just, whoop. I'm like, well, um, Good thing you didn't freak out. I got you trained. <laughs> so how many times have you roped yourself? Uh, I'm not going to divulge that number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. the problem with it is it's a super perishable skill. Super perishable. That's true. It's like shooting a handgun. You know, right. you got to do it. Or playing pool. You have to do it at that level that these guys are doing. you got some friends of yours that are – you know, like Chase, really good roper, but that's yeah. what they do. They got that thing in their hand every single day and sometimes multiple hours a day. You know, that's what they're doing yeah. for fun too. But they're also, they're trying to make uh, a halfway living out of it too sometimes. Yeah. And and that's what you got to do. I mean, there's some local guys that are like the Tryon brothers. You know, they've World been to champions. the national finals, you know, yeah. how many times? I mean, they're very, very good, very accomplished um, but that's what they do. That's all, but all they do. I'm sure they got some, some jobs, but they're not working. They're not working jobs like we are. I mean, their, their free time is, is spent rope and our free time is doing more work. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Like backyard. Oh, what, what are you doing today? I'm roping a steer on the, on the bale. What do you mean? Like they've got a head stuck in the bale. Right. And they're just sitting there. They're probably doing trick shots. Like I saw a video of, of somebody on YouTube. There, there's a group of guys, it, they all had beer and it was like a Sunday afternoon. And they're doing, they were playing pig with rope shots. Yeah, and sure. Like, all right, 10 feet away, double horns, first shot. And so they go one loop around, throw, and that's how you have to throw it. And it gets double horns. If you get double horns, if you don't get double horns, it's a P. And they're doing stuff like that. And it just, that's how you, that's how you get there. I don't have the time nor the patience to sit there with a rope and play piddle paddle to try and get good at it. I don't really care to, because I don't well, need to. That's not how we yeah. are, unfortunately. But but there's another context to that. When you say ropes, I mean, I handle ropes every day. That's true. You know, lead ropes. Um, and then, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, pack, you know, I got a 40 foot lash rope. Hey, I'll tie you a double diamond. And what was it? I think my record from start to finish, tying a double diamond. Just the tie, not not putting the packs on and the and the uh, top uh, cover is uh, right at three minutes to tie a double diamond hitch on a on a horse. Pretty yeah. fast, you know. And it, I can still do that. It is, but that still takes time because 
If anybody I've knows seen guys what, struggle for 30 minutes on a double diamond. Yeah, I was gonna say double diamond is a compli- it's one of the more complicated knots, but it's like if you were to picture it, it's like putting a cargo net over the top of a horse's packs and it's gonna stretch right. it down. Right. But I was talking about roping as in roping your steer or your cow. Um I've roped or now I started getting girls good. and their goats. Yeah, I, I got a goat rope in the back of my pickup actually. <laughs> I don't know how I acquired that, but it's a it's a legit goat rope that somebody bought, and they're like, oh, "I don't need this," and they gave it to me. They're no way. It. Yeah, they're practicing the rope and goat. You, no, you you mean a pig and string? They called it a goat rope because they were using it for goats, but yeah, it's pig and string. <laughs> oh, okay, so they're yeah, so they're the, so they're using it to to tie feet up with. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But no, I mean it's it's one of those things that you definitely have to get used to, but. I did start getting better at it um, when I was leaving high school because I was doing it a lot during the summertime, dragging stumps and stuff. Right. But, I mean, kind of going down that road specifically, and, and you can ask professional ropers this, you need to be careful because when you're roping and you're trying to dally, you dally with that thumb down and sometimes you'll pop that thumb off. And when I mean pop your thumb off, it means, yeah, you no longer have a thumb. That's what I do for fun. Oh. Yeah. You're a team roper. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Missing a thumb. I mean, those people don't have an appreciation for the weight on that rope. Even let's say it's a 50 pound stump. It might be a 50 pound stump, but when that horse starts moving the power behind a horse and your finger gets cinched up against that, that uh, uh, saddle horn, it, the rope is a very fine thing. You think of a piano string, you know, you put a piano string around your neck, like the, the Nazis did to uh, the Jews, it just went through skin. And that's what it's going to do to your bone. It'll just pop your thumb right Pops off. Pops it right off. Yeah. It's crazy. And I've gotten close. There's been a couple of times I was like, ooh, better be careful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, no, that's, that's, that's right. Um, yeah, I can remember being a kid. I think I was just telling your brother about this. Um, we were going past a piece of, of uh, real estate where, when I was about 11 years old, 12 years old, something like that. Nah, maybe a little older. Anyway, uh, one of the local guys would round up a bunch of kids to help him move his cows from uh, south of one town, clear up close up to the, the flats. Mm-hmm. And it was a three-day deal. He started out and he was, I, I love this guy. He was, he was a lot of fun. What a sense of humor. But he says, I'll tell you what, boys, because we'd all have to ride drag. And you're eating dust, but you're keeping everything moving. Calves are lagging to the back. Cows are wanting to take off. And so what we would do is we, we'd sit there all day long trying to keep these something move. You'd rope its hind legs and, you know, pick it up, drop it down. You get a couple of hawks in there, a double hawk. And you just, that's what you did all day long. And you got really good at it when I was young. Right. He starts out and he says, okay, kids, you can rope my cows and you can rope my calves. But if you rope my bulls, your ass is grass and I'm a lawnmower. And we're all like, ooh. Well, bulls lag back just like the calves do because they're lazy. And the problem is they won't jump and leap to get out of a rope. When it hits them, they just drag their feet because they're lazy. And this one particular bull was just pushing hard. I mean, backwards, you know, he just does not want to move. And so we started kind of hitting him a little bit when Bill wasn't watching. And I hit him one time and picked that rope around his one foot and he kind of pulled a little bit and that loop got smaller and it was about this big around on his foot but he's dragging I'm like ooh, and I'm, I'm throwing that rope ahead trying to making sure it wasn't going to come tight and he stepped and he turned and, he, and there was a sagebrush there and it tightened down underneath his dew claws but above his hoof yeah and I was like oh crap that's not, that's like, not coming off and not come off and I'm like I dumped my rope and I'm like Everybody's going, oh no, because <laughs> we're all young kids. That that bull, long story short, that was the first day. He drug that rope all the, the rest of that day, all the, the next day. And the last day, as we were going into that pasture, one of the boys was, he was about 17, I suppose. He found a chunk of wire and he, could, he couldn't get close to the bull. He made a hook in it. And he reached up there and he kind of, when everything was gathered up and he took that hook and he slid it in the hondo, pulled it loose and bull stepped out of it. It was like, oh, thank <laughs> God. Oh, I was, 
so lucky that he was there. Oh, man. Oh, God. That's, that's a buddy bad. right there. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll tell you, I was scared. I was legitimately scared. Oh, yeah. I didn't sure. say much those last couple or you know, the rest of the time, especially to Bill. I was kind of in, I think you would call it avoidance mode. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't happy with me, but everything worked out. Well, I think something to, to end on. Uh, ropes or lariats have been used a lot in the settlement of the West, specifically cattle, uh, the cattle industry. I think um, the thing that it's a movement towards making people more efficient, uh, making things easier and less stressful on the animals, and then um, – also avoiding rodeos like we talked about earlier today um in another in the shoot episode um we just don't we don't wrangle anymore um wrangling is the traditional way of branding where you go in to a herd you catch a calf with your rope and then you drag them to the essentially the the branding irons and from there you either castrate or or tag whatever you need to do um now we do vaccinations way back then they didn't do vaccinations um but uh that was the original way of doing it and and i've 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 done it growing up with uh mark and shirley and you get good at it once you figure out you know oh the rope's on my partner's side i'm the one to pull because it knocks their feet out and stuff like that and it's there's a there's a rhythm to it and then there's also once you get used to it you understand oh this is how i do it because it's just it it's muscle and memory, but I think that's kind of one of the things where it's a traditional thing and I enjoy doing it every once in a while. But then when we also go to doing it in the shoot, I'm like, man, this is a lot less work. I kind of enjoy being in the shoot. <laughs> well, if you got enough people, I mean, it, it's all about how many ads you got to do. And it, yeah. you know, yeah, there's a lot to that, but you know, we could do an entire in the shoot episode just on the different types of ropes and how that's evolved. And what oh, the sure. use is for us yeah there's a lot to that well it's like it's like this right here um i got a book on uh barbed wire yeah it's because you guys got barbed wire uh i think it was a year or so ago in an auction and it's literally a catalog and i'll just kind of throw it throw it in right. here of various barbed wire styles in the west well okay and that's you the same it. with the that's the same with the the rope is what you're talking about is just right there's a plethora of options well and and we're not just buying barbed wire for the sake of buying old barbed wire you got to remember we were at an auction which yeah. I, you could never take your mother to an auction and she sees this box of barbed wire and she says like oh hey what if we made this box and put so, all of these different so you things? did just buy barbed wire for the sake of buying barbed wire yeah she did. <laughs> well i think i probably did because i was trying to make her happy yeah well it's a project for me when i come in the story so oh it's a project <laughs> that's right <laughs> Oh, God, let's put this out to pasture. All right. <laughs>